Today I'm gonna tell you how to install the most important tool of any hackers. Of course I mean Kali Linux. Hi guys, I'm Ozzy and if you don't know, Kali Linux is an operating system like Microsoft Windows and Apple OS X. But it has the most important difference from the other systems, I mean a lot of tools for open testing and hacking. And today we will try to install it to USB flash drive in persistence mode. In this mode all your data will be saved even across reboots. Let's get started. Firstly, you need to download ISO image of the latest Kali build image for the system you will be running it on. For old computers with 3GB RAM or less, you need to download 32-bit version of Kali Linux. In a case for RAM more than 3GB, better to download 64-bit version. While your image is downloading, let's prepare a USB flash drive, which has at least 4GB of capacity, but I suggest to use at least 8GB flash drive for comfortable work. Also, it's possible to use usual SD card. The procedure is identical. Make sure that all important data from the flash drive is saved, because flash drive will be formatted and you will lose any data. Now you need to download Rafos. This tool will write image of Kali Linux to USB flash drive. Click to download and open downloaded file. Then click to create a bootable disk using double D image and try to open image file. If the directory you downloaded Kali Linux is empty, make sure that you have selected Show all files instead double D image. Now make sure that you have selected USB flash drive in this box. Otherwise, if there will be selected your hard disk drive, all your data will be erased. Then click to start and agree to download additional files. Then you will be asked about which method of writing image you wanted to use. Just select double D image, click OK and wait. Once the imaging is complete, reboot your computer. And now you can use the USB flash drive to boot into Kali Linux. To access board menu I need to press F8 or F9 as soon as computer turning on. In your case it may be other button. Then select your USB flash drive. And already now you can use the Kali Linux in live mode. In this mode all your changes and new files on USB flash drive will be lost after each reboot. It is not perfect mode to use Kali Linux. To save in all changes we need to use persistence mode, but before using this one first time we need to select live USB to configure this mode. It is a good idea to display the boot process, and if some applications will slow down the system we immediately understand which application does this so. Well, this system has loaded, and now I will need to change the screen resolution for more comfortable work. It is an options button. Then click Devices. Open Displays and let's find and select resolution of my monitor. So, as you can see Kali has very beautiful interface. It is an application button. Whoa, it's really amazing. A lot of applications for hacking and pen testing any devices, networks and the system. So, but now we need to make the persistence partition. Open the terminal. It looks like command prompt from Windows, but with unlimited functional. Now you'll need to identify the device patch to make the persistence partition. Execute the command fdisk l and find the your USB flash drive. In my case, there are two devices connected to my computer. It is dev sda and dev sdb. Sda is my hard disk drive where installed Windows. I can determine this by looking at the size of the device. As I already know, my hard disk drive has 1TB of capacity. USB flash drive which has 8GB connected to dev sdb. So remember, type fdisk dev sdb to create persistence partition and type n to create new partition. Then by using default settings press enter 4 times. Then type w and press enter. The message device or resource busy, it's not fault, just ignore this and write part probe. By now you need to check new partition. As you can see before latest input we had two partition and now devsdb3 has been created. Remember that devsdb3 we will use to save our date. Next create an ext4 file system in the partition mkfs.ext4l 
Persistence, Def SDB tree, and label it Persistence, E2 label, Def SDB tree, Persistence. Make a directory on the file system to mount your USB. Make dir p mnt my usb. Now we need to mount the partition on the directory you made. Don't click the desktop icon label at persistence. Mount dfsdb mnt my usb. Then create the configuration file to enable persistence. After all, just unmount the partition and reboot. I will type unmount dfsdb and end reboot. Now, if you boot up to live USB persistence, you will be able to save stuff everywhere on your Linux file system and every configuration you make locally will be available every time and everywhere you plug it in. But as you can see, the screen resolution was returned to default. It is because first run was unusual live USB mode and the previous date and session was lost. Now I have changed the screen resolution again and to check work of persistence mode I will create some date. For example, folder blah 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 and somewhere else. Let's execute reboot and check if the persistence mode working. I hope that it's working well and I don't need to change the screen resolution again and all our date will be saved. Well, all data is safe, I have no problems with my screen resolution after reboot and the persistence mode working well. And at the end of this video, advice. If your session will be locked, password is TOOR. It is the root, but vice versa. I hope you liked this video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and I will see you next time again.